Hey y'all, it's me, Tammy, with Real Southern Woman. It has been forever since I've been with y'all on Real Southern Woman. So, um, we got back into Georgia last night. And I know I'm crooked. I got a new phone, y'all. But we got back into Georgia last night. And today, I have been... Oh my goodness. Sorry, y'all. Today I have been very busy uh, catching up because we've been gone. Because y'all know for weeks, you know, Mama was sick. And then when she passed away, we had the funeral. Then I had a big yard sale. Um, and then we left and went to Florida. So when I got home last night, oh my Lord, it just kind of hit me. Um, I don't know why, but we pulled in the we pulled in the garage and we cleaned out the garage and most of mama's stuff is gone and because we had to move her during that time too. So anyway, when I got I, everything, I was fine until I went to bed and I got to missing mama so much. And so I had a really hard night last night and I stayed up and I didn't go to sleep until about four o'clock this morning. But I went in there. I'm so glad I did. But I did bring Mama's bed home. It was it's a it's an electronic bed that we bought off of Amazon. And the top and the bottom go up and down. It's it's not like a hospital bed. It's just a bed frame that moves, you know. And so um, I had May move her stuff. We have two bedrooms up here for the kid, you know, upstairs besides ours. And May used one for like a her TV room, and then she used one for where she sleeps and puts on her makeup. So I had her move all of her stuff out of the extra room because she's about to go off to college, and I put Mama's bed in that room. Um, I've got most of the things I had Mama's room decorated in, and I kept most of that stuff. And I'm actually going to set that room up in there and um, decorate it with the things that I had for Mama in her room. And I'm glad I did because last night when I was so sad, I went in there and I laid on her bed. And I don't know why. It just made me feel closer to her. Uh, and I know she's in heaven, y'all. But it just, there's just something about it. And those of y'all who's been, you know, who have been through it know what I'm talking about. But um, we have been so busy that I really haven't had time to grieve or um, do much of anything, really. So, um... Today, I decided finally I'm going to start back Bible study. Um, and it's kind of been a struggle off and on for me just because I know um, that parts of me on the inside are not quite, you know, right still. And y'all know that I've been going through a hard time even before Mama passed. But um, there's a lot of stuff just kind of emotional going on with me. And Part of it, too, is that the show is about to come on tomorrow night. Um, I am scared. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I'm scared as to how they're going to make me out to be and whether or not they're going to make me nice or mean or because you don't have any idea. And a lot of the time that I was feeling filming there, I was so, so serious about it because for one, I was exhausted, and I was in pain, and I was tired. I mean, parts of it was a lot of fun, but it was still, you know, something that, it was a competition, y'all. It was a real competition, and um, so I'll talk more about the show, but for y'all that's a real Southern woman, y'all kind of know my more intimate side, so I just thought I'd bring it up because I'm a little worried about what they're going to do with my behavior. <laughs> Y'all know me well enough to know that I'm high strung and I am opinionated. And if I don't like something, I'm going to tell somebody. And there was quite a few times that I didn't like something. Now, does it mean I'm not a good Christian person? Absolutely not. There's different personalities and different people. And am I a meek person? Absolutely not. And I haven't been since I was born. And I'll probably never be. Okay, and I know that meekness is a form of the spirit, but that's just one form that I don't seem to uh, have. I know we're supposed to all have all the fruits of the spirit, but I don't. I don't, I don't want to go there with y'all, so because I'm, I'm probably never going to be meek. I'll just tell you. Um, but I have been reading. Um, 
And I started reading while I was gone in Romans. And I love Paul. Um, he is an amazing guy. Uh, he is such a inspiration, I guess you would say, that somebody that loved Jesus so much. But you have to think about what Paul seen and the things that Paul witnessed um, were a lot different than what we do today, okay? And so I started reading about Paul, and I read the book, of, I read a few books in Romans. And then since I've been home, I looked in our Bible study book, and, and I've looked in, it's about Jeremiah tonight. So I thought I would bring it out and talk to you all about that, because it says stop comparing, okay? And this is about comparing ourselves to other people, and we all do it. You know, we really do. And whether or not we try to make ourselves feel better about ourselves because our behavior is better than somebody else's or because we feel bad because they get to do something that we don't. And I'll be honest with you, with my feet like they are, and even when I was on that show, you know, I could only do so much before, you know, I was hurting. And I took my compression socks with me. And those of y'all who saw the show last week, The White Family, they were the uh, black family out of Arkansas, but there was two on that in that family that I absolutely loved, okay? And um, one of us were really close, pretty close, you know, and I, I gave her some compression socks because she was kind of in the same boat I was because she was older like me. Uh, probably she was older than me, but still. Um, but I just want to kind of go over this with y'all and we'll talk about it. And um, it's something I think that all of us can apply to how we feel um, or how we have felt in the past. For those of y'all who have sent me um, cards for Mama passing away, I really appreciate the love that you're sharing with me and the encouraging words that you have. Um, it is a blessing. I got home and Chris went to the post office and I had quite a few cards today. And that was nice to get them today after I had such a hard time last night and when you lose somebody and I've always been this kind of person normally if I knew somebody who did if I sent them a card I didn't do it the week that somebody passed I would always wait because after a few weeks is when the reality sets in and it becomes more real because the first week is just crazy busy and so many things to do and you're grieving but it's just it's just that several weeks later you know, your life has changed so much and you realize that that person is gone and they're gone forever. Um, and so, and I know that I'm, I'm a little weird when it comes to talking about what we're going to be like in heaven. Uh, just because I don't think all of us, you know, we all want, I mean, like so many of us think there's angels and I don't believe in, I don't believe that angels are uh, us at all. I believe that angels were formed by God before we were even created. I believe there's a, such a thing called angels, just like it says in the Bible. But I do not believe that we become angels. And I'm praising the Lord that we don't because we live in the age of grace so that when we're saved, um, we're different than the angels. Okay? So I... um. I don't believe that I'll be visited by my mother. I'm sorry, I don't. Um, I don't believe that. Uh, I believe she's in heaven. And I believe, she, why in the world would she want to come back here when she's with God? And um, I believe that we belong to God. And um, now I know that we're supposed to be all knowing when we, when we are with God. Um, so I guess we would know each other in heaven. But if there's no tears in heaven and there's no sadness in heaven, I do not think that we're going to know everybody the way we know them down here. Because we're going to love people so much like Christ loved the world that no matter who we see in heaven, we're going to love them. And I just, I, I just haven't found it in the scripture. You know, what all of us claim that the main, you know, we're wanting to go to heaven to see our loved ones. Um, it really don't talk a lot about that. That's something we want to believe to make ourselves feel 
like we're going to see them again. But what, where we have to get in our walk with God is to understand that this world and this life is not about us. This world and this life is not about who we are. It's not about who our parents are and who our grandparents are and who our children are. It's more about Christ and God. The, the only reason we're here is because God created man to walk with him and talk with him and worship and um, not just for the fun of it, you know, like he did the, I mean, to me, that's more like what he did with the animals, you know, because they don't have souls and that's not in the Bible either, y'all. So uh, a lot of people want to believe they have souls, but that's not in the Bible. Okay. So, um, and I think what's, if it's important to God, then it's in the Bible, okay? So, for me, will I see Mama again? Absolutely. Will I know her as I knew her here? I'm not going to know that until I'm up there. Um, we should want to see Jesus more than we want to see our loved ones. We should want to be with Him. Because without Him, there would even not, not even be such a place called heaven. And not even be a hope for us. To live eternally with him. So um, I think that most of the people, um, I think most people, and it, I think it's our nature um, to want to feel that way. We believe what we want to believe to make ourselves feel better about the, um, I don't know. I know that the Bible, I believe what the Bible says, okay? And the Bible says to be absent, um, to be absent here is to be present with the Lord. And I believe that. And I believe that he's coming back and I believe that we're going to help him reign. And I believe with well, all of my heart that he's real. And I believe that, that he came here as an example and died for an ultimate sacrifice for our sins. And I believe that um, we are going to live in heaven eternally. I do believe that. But I guess where I'm going with that is heaven is going to be such a wonderful place that we're not going to have the needs in heaven that we need here. We're not going to have the hole that's where we're missing Christ here that Christ has to fulfill for us to feel that happy and joy when we get to heaven. Heaven is going to be something that we can't even comprehend. Um, and we're going to be so different when we get up there. I mean, there can, I don't think there'll be male and female. I don't think there'll be, uh, you know, daddies and, and children because if there was, like, for instance, my father, and some of y'all, my father is not, I don't think he's saved. And so I don't know for sure that he's going to be in heaven. And if I got up there and I knew everything, um, I, and my daddy didn't make it up there, how could there not be tears? So um, I think we're going to be so different that we really don't, we really won't understand any of it. Now, I know a lot of y'all want to, um, I got a lot of people signing off, but I hate, you know, I hate to be the bearer of uh, bad news, but there's people out there that believe in angels and they believe this and they believe that and they believe what they've been told instead of what the Bible says. Um, they believe what people say that the Bible says instead of picking it up and reading it themselves so that they can find out what the Bible says. And until you get ready to do that, um, I'll challenge you, just, just find it. You know, just find it in there. Because what God uh, finds the most important is salvation. What God wants us to do more than anything is spread the word of Jesus Christ. Way more than our personal wants and needs and the things that we put um, you know, people get mad at God about, which is just ridiculous. God has a lot more important things to do than revolve everything around just little O.S. And whenever we 
whenever we get to the point in our life to see how little we are and how big God is, we won't understand that. And let me just say it starts with reading your Bible because I was, I was there at one time and I'd never read the Word of God and I was raised in the church and I went to church every time the doors were open when I was a kid. And, but I didn't read my Bible, you know, and I didn't read my Bible until after I got married and I was in my thirties. Okay. So, and reading your Bible is not doing these little studies. I can tell you that right now. It's different y'all. Um, and it's just like tonight before I came on here, um, I wanted to look in the index and try to figure out subjects that I wanted to talk to y'all about. I never really was satisfied with what I looked at. Um, when we when we do that, um, it's more like studying the Bible, you know, reading these these little encouraging, like everything in here is about encouraging you for your day. Okay, um, it's more about uh, being encouraged in the Word of God and being encouraged somebody to give you something to look forward to or show you that life is, you know, life is sweet, um, but. But actually getting into the Word and reading it, uh, just for the sole purpose of reading it, is so different. And, and that's how you gain your faith. And um, I know because I've lived it. Um, so anyway, I miss my mama, but I know she's much, much better off than, we're, than she was here. But it doesn't take the pain away from them not being here to talk to. Because what we miss them for are... Even if we don't think it is, it's the selfish reasons. Um, more than anything, it's just, and even with mama with dementia, because she came in and out, there were days that I had that I could talk to my mama. And there were days that I had, if I was worried about something, I would tell her. Um, and, she, and she could talk to me. And um, I think a mama, the love of, of a mother, I'm gonna cry, <laughs> is so different than anything else out there. Um, it's different than anybody else's love. It's different than anybody else's relationship. Um, a mama's just a mama, and there's nothing that can replace a mama. And so I can remember being grown, and when I got cancer, I can remember uh, being in situations when I was in pain, and I wanted my mama. And, um, and then you have to think about the people who, bless their hearts, didn't even have a mama. Or their mama died when they were young. Or they, you know, were foster children. And they never really had the true love of a mother. And even my mother wasn't a perfect mother. Who is perfect? Nobody but Jesus Christ. That's why we need him so bad. And so, but I, did, I have found that since Mama has passed away, um, and some of y'all know who we are, and you're, you're know, from our hometown, but there's nobody out there that, that has a perfect life, and it's perfect. And, but now that she's gone, all I think about are the good things. And I sat down last night, and I went in that room, and I laid on her bed, and then I got up and, you know, got my, you know, set back together and wrote down some things. And I wrote about everything that I remember as a child. Because that's when our mothers were the most like our mothers is when we were children and we were dependent on them. And so I wrote down all the things um, that I remembered about doing with my mama and how much fun it was and how much uh, joy she brought into our lives and what a talented person she really was. Um, she was an amazing, talented woman. And um, she really never had the support that she could have had. And if she had, she would have probably been a lot more successful than she was. Um, but she was extremely talented. And so it was nice last night just to sit down in there and write down all of those things. 
And does it mean I'm terribly sad? No. I mean, I just can't imagine what it would be like not to know Jesus Christ. Because without the thoughts of eternal life, and not just so I can see her again. That's not it. Eternal life is a hope. A hope that we have. And Jesus Christ said it himself that he's going to prepare a place. Um, he loves us that much, y'all. He loves us so much. He didn't just come down here to die for us. You know, he wanted his um, people to be with him. And he told his daddy that. He told the father. He told God that that he wanted us to be with him. And, he, and so that's a wonderful hope. I mean, without the thought of seeing our parents again or our child that we've lost or no matter what, who it, and what it is, um, it wouldn't be available if it weren't for Christ. So he's the number one, okay? And so um, now if I get up there and I get to see Mama, oh, Lord of mercy, I'll be excited. And if I get up there and I get to see my grandparents, I'll be excited. But I tell you what I won't be excited about is the people I can't see. I won't be excited about that. So I'm just not sure how it all works. But you know what? If it were real important, it would be spelled out in black and white in the Word. And because it's not, I don't I don't worry about it. Okay? And I don't claim it if it's not there either. So just for my own, you know, comfort or whatever. But this is tonight. Finally, I'm going to talk to y'all. But y'all know that it's just been a long few weeks and but it's time I came back, you know, and I'm coming back the day of the day before my crazy show. So I imagine I'll be a roller coaster about that, too, because I know they're going to show drama and who knows the way they'll show it at the end of the at the end of the show last Thursday night. They show me upset. They show my brother's face upset as if we're upset with each other and we were not. So who knows what they're going to make it out to be? All I know is they know I'm conservative out there in California. <laughs> and so we'll just have to wait and see how they show us because, you know, we're a lot different than those people out there. So um, we'll just have to wait and see. Um, and I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. So it says, stop comparing. This is June the 26th. And it says, before you were born, I consecrated you. And this is out of Jeremiah 1, 5. Now, Jeremiah was a prophet. Jeremiah, there's a book in the Bible called Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Uh, it says he was an emotional prophet. He wasn't a uh, Superman prophet, you know. So he had a lot of ups and downs. He had a lot of uh, questions for God and thoughts about... Uh, <sighs> He had a lot of emotional things that he had to deal with. Um, he had to deal with the sin of people and him feeling the pain and the guilt for their sin because he wanted them to be better and he wanted them to believe and he wanted... So he had to go through that. He had to go through Jerusalem fail while he was in on the scene so we had to see Jerusalem fall so we had a lot of things that um, he went through and so he was an emotional prophet but this says um, do you ever look at other people and feel a painful pang in your heart if I were only like Margaret Sue Joanne if you're a man John Paul Whoever, if I were only like them, wealthy or athletic like them, beautiful or smart like them, or perhaps your comparisons are based on family dynamics, opportunities, education, social connections. <laughs> it's everywhere, y'all. Um, and I'll give you, I mean, you can't help it, but sometimes feel that way. Um, and it can be as simple as, like me, I, I don't, I sure couldn't run. I couldn't run for anything. And yes, I should lose some weight. But you know what? That's just part of life. And I'm a, most people in, that are my age are probably the heaviest they, they are their whole entire life. 
so that I just happen to be in that in that age group <laughs> but I can't run because my feet don't work like they used to and I'll look at ladies and guys when I'm driving down the road and I see them running I actually hurt to watch them run I think how can they do that oh my gosh I mean could you nothing wouldn't that be the coolest thing to be in to be that healthy to be able to run down the street or run a marathon or or you know and I know people probably think oh you could do it but I, but no I couldn't and there's people out there that can't and if you're in a wheelchair you're, you know, you probably think, you know, what if I could do that? Um, but we can't, okay? And so what we have to do is we have to realize that even if we can't, um, it's okay that we can't because we can make the best of what we've got, okay? Um, I, and I look at Aisha Curry, you know, she is the... Um, host of the show and her husband is very wealthy and the, you know they have plenty of money and I'm sure that when she got ready to do um, you know branch out she had the funds to do it and she had she so so she's one of these that has the opportunities the education um, the connections um, to be successful and not saying that she doesn't work hard because I'm sure she works like crazy. She's on, I mean, it's amazing what the lady does. She's beautiful and she's sweet and she believes in God and Christ. And so she does have faith. Um, and she actually thanked me for sharing my faith on the show. On not her show, but on, on my Color Valley Cooks show. Uh, so Aisha is, you know one of faith okay so but it says the ways that you can compare yourself to others goes on and on and it does y'all and the truth is you are right you aren't not like you are not like another person you are one of a kind likewise the plan god has for you your you not lord mercy likewise the plan god has for your life is unique and amazing and no one else has one that matches it. Your life is different than everybody else's. And it's because you're special. Okay? And it says that God has a plan for it. And the Father has set a course before you designed exclusively for you to travel. He has planned tasks for you that are yours alone to complete. He has given you exactly what he intended for you to have as the gifts, the background, the abilities needed to fulfill his purposes for you. And you know that person you keep comparing yourself to? That person would never be able to complete the plan that God has for you. Because the Father created you for that role. So don't let the comparisons be an excuse for disobedience or discouragement. Embrace the reason he created you in triumph. In his name. It says, um, and then this is our Jesus, our perfect hope by Charles Stanley. And it says, Jesus, help me to walk in your will and be all you created me to be. Amen. My hope is in Jesus because he formed me for a purpose. And, um, and he tells Jeremiah in the scriptures that he knew him before he was born. Okay. So God knows us when we're created, and he creates us for a purpose. He knows us before we're born, and he loves us just as he intended us to be, not like somebody else. And so we shouldn't get discouraged. We should just keep going, you know? Now, I know that some of the things I say are controversial, Controversial, however, I, I don't have a good vocabulary. You know what I'm saying. I know I'm about to be on TV. I know I have a show. Um, I know that if I didn't get on here and talk about Jesus Christ, it would probably boom even better. But do I care? No. I'm who I am. People don't like me. They don't need to watch me. 
if they don't like the fact that I share Christ, they don't have to watch. And But if they do, then they can enjoy it. But I'm not going to come this far. I'm not going to be blessed by God, be saved through cancer, um, and be where I'm at today to put him, to blow out my light and put it under a bushel. Okay, I'm always going to be who I am, no matter what. And um, I'm thankful um, for what has God has done in my life. I'm thankful for um, his word. I'm thankful that he gave me enough passion and drive to read his word. Um, because I've told y'all before that in our nature, we do not want to read the Bible. We just don't. Because that's not who we are. We're fleshly, sinful people, whether we want to admit it or not. And so, when God gives you the faith that you need to believe in Jesus Christ, He does that. When He gives you the faith that you need to read the Bible, when He gives you the faith that you need to trust Christ as your Savior, you should always be thankful um, and never just, you know, take it for granted. Um, and I'm happy. I really am a happy person, thanks to Jesus Christ, okay? And it really helps that I have a really nice husband, too. Um, but I just um, hope y'all are ready for me to be back. I like to talk to y'all. I actually feel better when I do. Y'all are like my counselor. <laughs> And so, um, if you don't agree with something I say, it's okay. You don't have to agree with everything I say. If you want to believe that your mother's up in heaven and you're going to know her by everything she's ever done, everything, and you're going to remember everything, then you go ahead and believe that. Um, and it may be even true. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but I just haven't found it in the Word of God, so it's hard for me to believe, okay? Um but that doesn't mean it's not there. I mean, there's people that want to think that there's animals in heaven. And I sure hope there is because I sure love mine. But we don't really know. Um, you know, and it's so funny because uh, when people want to talk about things like that, that's not what makes or breaks anything. It's not what makes or breaks our relationship with Christ. It's not what should make or break a relationship with each other. The only thing that should make or break a relationship is when somebody does not believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Because that's a big deal. But the, uh, the other stuff is not so big. And if it is big, Christ tells us, I mean, Jesus, if something is important in this book, it's repeated more than once. And so you've always got those that say, well, you're going to interpret thing, one thing one way and we're going to interpret something some another way. But let me say this, the real doctrine of this word is repeated more than once. And when it's repeated at least three times, there's not a whole lot of way of changing what it has to say. And it's pretty straightforward, uh, the doctrine part. So... If it's not true doctrine, then don't, don't, you know, don't let it really mess with you too much. Like, there's people that think, you know, there's dinosaurs and Genesis and, and all this stuff. And, and I'm like, who cares? If, if Christ had thought that it was so important for us to know about a dinosaur, he would have made it a lot more clear in this word. So, don't, you know, don't worry about stuff like that. All you need to worry about is the real stuff, the meat in here, the things that he does say over and over. You know what this word is all about? The whole entire thing. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. The word is Jesus Christ. So what that means is in the beginning was Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ was with God. And Jesus Christ is God. That's what that verse means. 
So anyway, I hope that y'all have a wonderful evening. I hope um, that you've gained something through this. Um, if anything, we need to love Christ more than we love ourselves. And we can't do that uh, when we think that everything in our whole entire life should be good and everything that we go through should be answered and everything that we, you know, that we shouldn't get mad at him for things because something didn't go our way. Because this, this is a lot bigger than us. Okay. He's so much bigger than us. And uh, there's a big, big plan coming. There's uh, dimensions, I think. Like when the, when, when the word says that there's uh, princes and principal, oh, was it princes and principalities and nothing can pluck you out of his hand. Y'all know I can't recite things right out of my head, but what he's trying to say is, is there's evil in this world and there's good. And they're fighting each other all the time. And they're all around us. And there's different dimensions. God is in different, I mean, there's things that we can't even see. I mean, we don't even know half the thing that's going on that God's got going on. And so, um, the least we could do is just try to believe in him and try to tell people about him. Um, but I hope y'all have a blessed day. I hope tomorrow when I'm on, I don't know that I don't embarrass myself too much or they don't make me look like I'm embarrassing myself too much. But I will be honest with y'all, I got mad on that show. I got mad uh, not because I'm not a Christian or because of nothing, because of who I am. Um, you get out and you start doing stuff like that and you you realize what TV is. Now, I can't, I can't tell y'all everything, but I will tell you um, that Unless you're there and you can experience things, you don't really, you're not going to, you're not going to know everything that went on, okay? And Sherry Diggs, if she listens to this, she asked me, Tammy, and I need to put this on Carter Valley Cook. She said, um, do y'all really have a timer and do y'all really have to play in that amount of time and do you really do this and do you really do that and i was thinking well heck yeah like i guess she thinks that even that is fake let me just tell you the competition part there's nothing about it that's fake that's why i was serious when i was cooking i wasn't all goofy and you know trying to be you know like a tv star i was trying to cook and win a competition uh, so uh, it didn't, I didn't care whether or not people liked me. What I needed to do is focus on the task at hand. With a chemo brain like I've got and a brother and a husband asking me questions, I was overwhelmed a lot. Like, I really could not think straight with so much happening at one time. So, uh, there were times that I was quite stressed, and I'm, my face is going to look like I'm stressed. There was times I was tired, and my face is going to look like I'm tired. But it doesn't necessarily mean that I'm mean, or it was just hard, y'all. But yes, it's true. It's real. They give you a time, and they do not stop the clock. Like, they do not. And I'll tell you, Chris got cut, and Eddie got cut with knives. They probably won't even show it. They'd never stop the clock. So we didn't slow down and we didn't get breaks and we didn't get to fix our plate to make it look pretty after the time went off. You're going to be able to see it before it's over. Um, so get ready for the ride. A lot of people weren't real happy with the show. I guess they thought it was going to be a cooking show. It's not a cooking show. It's a cooking competition show. There's a big difference. Um, when you got, I think that's why Sherry asked me the question. She said, when when you said there's hours of footage and they got to take it down to one hour, does that mean this and that? I'm thinking, Sherry, there are four families cooking at one time. There are cameras at every angle, okay? We have to have interviews for hours for one show. 
because we have to talk about stuff. And then they might clip out 30 seconds or maybe a minute or two. And that's all y'all got get to see. But we sat there for a long time. So um, it's not the cooking part. But just think about it. If, if they're watching four families cook. And you've got these first two shows are um, two competitions. You've got your first competition. And then one gets exempt. And then you've got your second competition where one gets voted off. So you've got... Eight cooks, eight cooking times, would you call it? You've got four families cooking twice, and it's all got to be in a one-hour show. That's why you don't get to see much food. So hopefully towards the end, uh, since there'll be less contestants, you know, of course, once you weed it out, you're going to see more footage, just like on any show, like American Idol, um, you know, it starts out with so many people. You just get to see little clips of them singing. But then, and then during the show, you might get to see them sing three minutes or four minutes. And then by the end of the show, they're getting to sing three songs. You know, it's just like any other competition. So get ready. We're about to be uh, shown to the world, I guess you could say. Um, and I'm a little nervous about it. And all of us are as contestants, I mean, because we don't know what they're going to do with the footage. When you sign the piece of paper, you have to sign that they can use it any way they want to. They can clip it any way they want to. They can put it together any way they want to. It's theirs. They have all the rights. You don't do not. It's part of being on the show. I did it just so that people would know who Color Valley Cooks is. I mean, why not? I mean, we got two girls going into college. Why not go do the show? Um, now, um... With that said, we also cannot tell about the set, you know, like how they ran things and what we hated about things or what we really liked about things. I think we can as long as we're not giving away something. Like, of course, we can't tell you how they film and like, uh, there ain't a whole lot to it. But we can't tell you like a lot of things because it would... Um, tell you something about the show we should it like what do you call it you know i can't give you information before it happens or it's a spoiler is what they call it spoiler so we have to be careful about that um but i guess that's all i'm gonna say for now so tomorrow will be a big night my kids are gonna watch it with us they didn't watch it last week my kids did not watch it last week um my kids do not watch tv but uh, I told them they have to watch it this week because me and Daddy will be on TV, so they have to sit in the living room and have a real TV day. You know, when we were growing up, everybody sat in the living room and watched TV together. Uh, we sat at the table and we ate together. We, If we talked on the phone, we had to do it in front of everybody. I mean, think about it, y'all. I mean, when I had a boyfriend, we had those telephone that had the long cords, and we would pull them, you know, as far as we could away from mom and daddy so we could talk to our boyfriend. And now all these kids get to do whatever they want to. I mean, it's just wild. It's amazing how much the world changes and changes in the time that 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 it happens in. But anyway, I've been on here too long and I gotta I gotta download this and put it on um YouTube because I haven't posted in forever. But I'm back. Ain't it about time I'm back. I looked y'all and and it has been since July not July, good Lord, April, since I was on regular with y'all. I appreciate y'all being patient and being understanding, and I've been through a lot, and now I'm about to go through a lot emotionally with this crazy show, but y'all can go through it with me, can't you? So I can tell y'all about stuff. Uh, I think Real Southern Woman's even more private than uh, my co Real Southern Woman is really the most private uh, show that I've got, and I and I'm sure they probably know I have it. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, it's my personal stuff. And so y'all, you know, I'll share more of my personal stuff with y'all than anybody. Um, because I'm not gonna I'm not gonna get on Color Valley Cooks and talk like this. Uh, but I appreciate that y'all love me enough to listen. Um, let's finally say our prayers. I could talk to y'all forever since I hadn't in so long. Um and I'm hoping that tomorrow I can cook something or do something fun for Colored Belly Cooks. Chris picked a bunch of blackberries today, and I got to do something with them. 
Um, so I guess we'll see you tomorrow. I'll either come on before the show or after, so it could be late. I'm used to staying up late now that Chris is retired. I just really am, y'all. Um, and I may, when I get ready to set up Mama's room, maybe go live a couple of times and let y'all see what I'm going to do in there, too. That's really going to be my new spot for y'all and the Word of God and everything else. It's going to be my little quiet room. So let's say our prayers. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for your Son, Jesus Christ. We thank you um, that he was willing to come down here, sacrifice his life for us, and do your will. And um, we know that it was hard and that it wasn't an easy thing for him to do as a man here on earth and as God. For he prayed to you lots and, 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 and said it out loud. Um, but we thank you for that, that eternal life that we have and the eternal life where I know my mother is. And it is, it is a wonderful um, peace that nobody could ever, ever um, have without your son, Jesus Christ. And we thank you for that. Um, I just hope that you are, show some, I just hope that during the show tomorrow, that they don't make me and my brother look mean when we're really not. And, and he's a pastor, so he's a little worried about it. So, um, and it's all up to you anyway, except that I worry because I don't know that many of the Californians out there are really Christians and that they're praying and that they're under your will. So that makes us nervous. So anyway, I know that's crazy, but God knows what I'm talking about. Um, be with us and be with all the people who have uh, come on here and listen. And I pray that you would encourage us and give us the faith that we need to read your word and to uh, shine your light to the world and never be ashamed. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Bye, y'all. Love you. Very, very much. Oh, and I got a new phone, and this this video camera is going to be the bomb. I think y'all really going to like it. So, I need to cook for y'all tomorrow. Bye! I'm so excited I'm back with y'all.